Hello, my name is David Jenks, and I'm going to talk to you about my internship, which I did at Access Point Kids in Idaho Falls. This was a paid internship, and I did it during the spring of 2013. Now, what we did at this internship was developmental therapy and habilitative services. And so I had um, specific clients or diff different clients, depending on the week. And what we would do is work on developmental delays that they would have. Uh, one of the clients that I primarily worked with had autism. Uh, he was 15, and so we were working on getting him to be able to communicate. Um, he could speak, you know, a couple words. He could, you know, say some sentences, but he couldn't have a conversation or anything like that. Um, and his parents also wanted him to be able to be out in the community without having outbursts. Um, he was very sensitive to, you know, sounds and things like that, and so he did not like being out in the community at all. Community at all. Um, and so we worked with him to basically just get him to the point where you know he could stand it. Um, he could be out in the community, he could be with his family, and his family wouldn't have to worry about him running away or having an outburst, which could potentially hurt someone else or hurt himself. Um, and then habilitative services is helping you know children, um, adolescents, um, it could even apply to adults. Um, helping them just to have the skills that they would need to thrive in the world. Um, and so with this client, we were primarily working on just getting him to, you know, be able to be with his family um, and to be, you know, effective family member, um, to teach him the skills that he needed to um, do his chores and to, um, you know, basic hygiene and things like that. And how we would do this is through discrete trial training. Um, and I'm going to show you a quick video that will explain what discrete trial training is. In DTT, the discrete trial is used to teach new behaviors. The definition of a discrete trial is presenting a learning opportunity in which the student's correct response will be reinforced. The discrete trial consists of three parts which correspond to the ABCs of behavior. These parts are the discriminative stimulus, or SD, the response, or R, and the stimulus reinforcer, or SR. Here's an example of a discrete trial. Look at me. Good looking! High five! As you saw, the SD was the instructor saying, look at me. The response was the student looking at the instructor and the stimulus reinforcers were the instructors saying good looking, giving a food treat, and high-fiving. Hopefully that video helped you um, understand one of the things that we use to help these clients learn all these skills. Um, <clears throat> so how I found my internship was actually, I think it was Brother Rain and Brother McCoy. I was talking to them, it was a couple semesters ago, I believe last fall about internships and how to find one. And they actually told me to go onto the white pages on the internet and search social services. Um, so I did that, I got an idea of, of what kind of things I could do an internship in. And I really wanted to focus on working with adolescents. Uh, what I want to do is um, school counseling and as well, you know, marriage and family counseling. <clears throat> and so I, I really wanted to to get an idea of what um, therapy or things with therapy with adolescents was like. Um, and I actually was talking to another student who was doing their internship at Access Point, <clears throat> and she gave me the supervisor's uh, phone number, and I gave her a call. Her name is Ashley Burke, and I talked to her about you know potentially working for them, and she was overjoyed uh, that we uh, that there's a guy interested in working there. Uh, not that it's not a, a good place for guys to work. It was just that they were, they're still relatively new. I think they opened up in 2009 or 2010. And so they're in desperate need of male uh, therapists. And so I started working there. Um, you know, I was kind of worried at first about how my schedule would work out because I was planning on being on track um, while I was doing my internship and so I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get enough hours and complete the internship um, you know on time 
Uh, but they are very flexible. They were able to work with my schedule. I basically gave them my schedule and said when I could work, and that's when they scheduled me. They didn't try and schedule me on any days that, that I wasn't you know, originally able to. And so my responsibility, responsibilities at my internship, uh, like you previously saw in the video, I would I work with the clients on those skills um, and the goals that, that their parents had set for them. Uh, we did a lot of work in the community uh, with those goals, and that's primarily where, where we worked with other people um, in the community. Uh, we'd also have to keep track of the hours which we worked because we'd have to fill out billing logs. And these billing logs were so that they would know what we were doing with the clients, um, how many hours we were working, and, and so that we could get paid. Uh, we'd also have team meetings every week, and what we would do at the team meetings is we would talk to the other uh, therapists that worked there, and we would discuss, you know, all the different um, the different clients that people were working with, as well as uh, things that we could do to help them um, learn, you know, better things. Um, so we were we we're trying to help them just make it a more positive environment for the clients. And so each day I would typically pick up my client from the office or sometimes at school. Uh, for a while he did track, he was on the track team. Um, and it was just kind of to get him to do something he enjoyed doing and, and we'd work on, you know, being around other people at the track meets and stuff. Uh, we worked on him following instructions um, and just listening to, to the adults. And so this, um, I was kind of frustrated at first because I didn't really feel like I was doing anything. Um, I just felt like I was, you know, trying to help this kid learn how to, you know, be an effective human, basically. Um, but as I, you know, started thinking about it, I realized that I was helping this kid learn skills that would make his life easier and his family's life easier. And so I, I had found out what I wanted to do for my internship. Like I found, you know, something I could do where I'd, you know, directly help people and help them, you know, have a better life. Um, <clears throat> and I was always told that I was so positive about some of the clients. Uh, there were also a lot of difficult clients that I worked with. And the client that I worked with was actually one of the most difficult. And I was told that I had a very positive attitude about uh, working with him. Um, a lot of the other therapists that work with him uh, were just didn't really have good attitudes about it. They felt that, you know, he was just a problem kid, that, you know, they needed to do something else with him instead of having him at the office. Um, and I was able to encourage other people to have positive outlooks on things um, because, you know, you don't really know what effect you have on people until, you know, they're gone, um, basically. Um, and so that's how I kind of ben benefited the office where I worked at. I just helped everyone have a positive attitude on... Uh, working with these these kids that really needed our help. Uh, this benef this experience was really beneficial to me. Um, it helped me gain confidence that I could you know be a therapist. I could work with kids. I could help them, and I could do a good job at it. Um, it helped me develop skills that would help me in my future career as you know potentially a therapist. Um, and then it also gave me an idea of you know, what possible jobs I could do um, with my bachelor's degree in marriage and family studies. Um, this is a job that you could do uh, with a bachelor's that you don't need to go on and get a master's in. Um, and I would definitely recommend this to anyone who is interested in helping other people and, and working with kids and adolescents. Um, if you are interested, uh, they are currently looking for people to work there. Um, you would contact Ashley Burke. Um, there's her phone number right there, 208-522-4026. You can also get a hold of her uh, through her email, uh, and that is ashley at accesspointkids.com. Um, and that is probably the best way to get a hold of her. Uh, that number there is the office phone, and so you'll have to go through the receptionist there. And then if you also just wanted to you know, peruse their website, there's their website right there, www.accesspointkids.com. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you do have any questions regarding Access Point, uh, you can either ask Ashley or uh, you can talk to Brother McCoy or Brother Rain. Uh, they 
They could give you my email address and feel free to ask me any questions about it. Thanks.